Together Forward is my theme for the, today's presentation. It has been my personal mantra since I've taken over in the last nine months as serving as the chair of Spokane Board of County Commissioners. I have focused on moving the county into a future by building partnerships to collaborate on important initiatives and priorities for our community. In my time as serving as your Spokane County Commissioner, the projects that mean the most to me have been the, and have had the biggest impact are those that involve teamwork, collaboration, and working together towards a common goal. So join me as we take a glimpse into a few of the services provided to the community by Spokane County. Spokane County, our mission is really to be the preeminent organization that provides the best in class services to the community. We're comprised of 2,000 dedicated employees that provide outstanding services to the entire community. Our county is actually comprised of more than 50 departments from criminal justice to our parks department to the roads and the transportation network from a medical examiner office to a fairgrounds. And it's really a very diverse set of functions that we provide. Our services are comprised of financial transition and reintegration services, being able to connect them to their federal VA benefits. Spokane is home to 44,000 veterans with our surrounding counties bringing in another 20,000 on top of that. So we have a great relationship with Fairchild. A lot of folks transition out of Fairchild Air Force Base and make Spokane their home. So we have a really strong bond with our veteran community here. You're going to get assigned to someone who's going to help you through the process, whether it's filing for a VA claim or asking for financial assistance or just finding out more information about your VA education benefits. It's an easy process when you have a battle buddy to walk through it with you, and that's exactly what we have here. The most important part of our mission in serving those who served is it's done in a positive service honoring environment and with positive service honoring staff. No matter what they're coming to us for as far as veterans programs, services and benefits, we just want to make sure that they have a very edifying and positive experience throughout and they feel honored for the service that they've already given. The primary responsibility of the medical examiner's office is to investigate deaths occurring in Spokane County that are of public health or public safety interest. So that includes deaths that are due to violence or injury, deaths where drugs may have played a role, and deaths in which their person was young, they were in seemingly good health, and we don't have a good reason for their death. But the medical examiner work also provides information on what drugs are circulating in our community, who's overdosing on those drugs, where are fatal car crashes occurring, and what factors are involved in those crashes, how and how frequently community members are committing suicide, who among us is dying because of lack of medical care or lack of adequate housing. We have a lot of highly trained, highly skilled people working here. The office as a whole is accredited by the National Association of Medical Examiners. It is one of less than 100 out of 2,300 offices that do death investigation that has uh, such an accreditation. Understanding how and why people are dying in our community helps us understand how people are living in our community. And and provide a framework for us to look at ways that people can live better and hopefully longer lives in Spokane County. Public Works Department is responsible for constructing, maintaining, and operating all the roads in Spokane County. We maintain over 2,500 miles of roadway, 166 bridges, over 10,000 drainage structures. We have a fleet of trucks and graders, sweepers, all kinds of heavy road maintenance equipment that, that goes out and we do snow removal, we do sweeping on roads. We have a, a separate fleet that helps us maintain the traffic signals and signs. We have 120 employees in our maintenance section that are dedicated to just getting people home safely, getting business and transportation and freight where it needs to go, and just making it a safer place to live. So whether you choose to live, work, or play in the county, it's a place that our citizens can experience great service. It's a place where our workforce is dedicated to providing those sort of services to our community, and they delight in doing that.
As we all know, none of this can happen without a great team. And so I'd like to start with my fellow commissioners. I have the honor of serving with two other commissioners who oversee the business of Spokane County of over a half a million people. So today we have Commissioner Josh Kearns with us and Commissioner Al French couldn't be with us today. He has another engagement with the downtown Rotary. And now let's talk about our amazing team of employees at Spokane County who work to make over 50 departments run seamlessly. On your tables, you'll see our 2022 budget highlights and a listing of some of our departments. With nearly 2,000 employees to serve in these departments, led by our CEO, Scott Simmons, the county is a major employer in our region. So for me, I will say as I look across the room today, all of you are my constituents. And it saddens me to think that come January, only 20% of you I will be able to call my constituents. So regardless of my personal perspective, on the new legislation, the fact remains that on January 1st, 2023, there will be five county commissioners, each representing just their own district. It is my hope and belief that the commissioners will work together in this new form of government to continue to move the county together forward. Next with our economy, we all look at the region through our own individual eyes and experiences. Growth and vitality must be viewed in each industry sector. The county is the foundation of our 13 municipalities and countless more businesses and nonprofits within our region. I am pleased to announce that Spokane County has once again maintained our AA plus bond rating, which is the highest rating for a county of our size. This ensures the lowest interest rates on bonds for our county and for our taxpayers. This also demonstrates the fiscal responsibility that our commissioners over the last several years have demonstrated. We continue to see through tremendous growth in sales tax revenue. We budgeted $68.5 million in sales tax revenue for 2022. Our current projections, though, show that we will exceed that by about $5 million. Another key indicator of economic growth is our value of new construction. So just this week, Assessor Tom Conus reported that we have a record-breaking year for commercial and residential construction that topped $1.5 billion. 4,600 properties make up this new construction value. This shows that we are about to hit a billion dollars in new residential construction, which is significantly increasing our local housing capacity. These economic indicators, our bond rating, sales tax revenue, and new construction show again the county is in a strong economic position as we move together forward. Two years ago, Spokane County was entrusted with $91 million of CARES Act funding that we put into the community for businesses, nonprofits, COVID response, food security, and child care. Many of you in the room today were recipients of some of those funds. Because of these strategic investments that the commissioners made, we had one of the most resilient counties for businesses in the state of Washington. Spokane County has now been entrusted with an additional $101 million of federal funding from the American Rescue Plan, known as ARP. These ARP dollars are needed to, need to be allocated by the end of 2024 and fully spent by December of 2026. As a county commissioner, it is my intent to use these once-in-a-lifetime funding opportunity to the highest and best use to have a lasting impact on our, all of our residents. As you can see on this slide, there are five main categories for ARP spending priorities. The number in bold is the total directed to each category, and underneath that amount is the, what's been awarded to date. As you can see in the gray section, this is where we have just over $6 million yet to be allocated of our $101 million. I would like to highlight now a few areas that we have spent our ARP allocation that illustrate how Spokane County is utilizing these funds. In January, we hosted a Council of Governments. In attendance were local government officials along with businesses and nonprofit leaders. One of the takeaways from these discussions was a desire for a regional priority. What rose to the top was education, workforce, and housing. One of the priorities that I felt very strongly about funding was with ARP dollars was education. So I was pleased when the Board of County Commissioners voted to approve $5 million to help see the Launch Northwest Initiative. This initiative grows our post high school educational and vocational attainment, which will supply us with a strong future workforce. 
Launch Northwest has collectively fund, was, has been collectively funded by ARP dollars from Spokane County, City of Spokane, City of Spokane Valley, making this a true regional priority. So I'm really excited that this will provide our youth hope and opportunity for the future. Through the ARP process, we have seen other ways that we could fund different priorities that came into us. And so we used Spokane County as leveraging those additional funds to meet needs in our community. These included over $53 million distributed to rental assistance to help people who are renting stay in their homes, $1.7 million of resettlement of Ukrainian refugees in the Spokane community, thanks to Vladimir, $300,000 for the redevelopment of the Hilliard Library into a mental health clinic, and $300,000 for the Native Project's Youth Behavioral and Mental Health Clinic in the West Central neighborhood. I look forward to announcing awards in the, in the coming weeks for the upcoming categories that haven't some have closed and some, some have not closed yet are still open, which will provide ARP dollars to nonprofits, affordable housing, workforce development, childcare, community violence interventions, tourism, travel, and hospitality, neighborhood features such as parks. And last I wanna talk about in this section, our Spokane County Fair. It was all systems go and everybody came out. Our attendance was over $210,000. People got to see concerts, livestock, do events and, and the carnival rides. So thank you for making Spokane County's Fair a success and I look forward to next year. Now we'll take a look into our initiatives on behavioral health. There's a lot of discussion going on as to what's happening with behavioral health. Spokane County has been and remains a strong leader in the regional behavioral health system of care. We continue to invest in new strategies and interventions to meet the expanding mental health and substance use challenges facing our community. This is evident in a wide array of behavioral health community services currently provided to the most vulnerable citizens of Spokane County. But also our dedication to identifying innovative programming to address emerging needs. I wanna take a moment to highlight a few of these initiatives, starting with youth. The Youth Behavioral Health Support Line pilot program, also known as the Teen Text Line, gives youth a safe place to chat with someone who understands. This free confidential service gives youth experiencing mental health and or substance use challenges someone to talk to that has been in their shoes. On your table, you'll see a card uh, for the Teen Text Line. I ask you to take that with you and share that. Another initiative is, the, is for student wellness school-based screening. It is a pilot project that is completely anonymous and will provide vital data on health, resiliency, and challenges experienced by middle school and high school youth to help determine the current needs of our youth in the area. The pilot is being implemented in two schools within the West Valley School District. So I wanna thank Kyle Rydell, the superintendent from West Valley, for his partnership with us to help us lead this pilot program. And then we hope to take this further and screen over 1,000 students a year in the near future. Spokane County, in, in partnership with the Washington State Healthcare Authority, implemented Children, Youth, and Family Mobile Crisis Team Enhancement within the existing mobile crisis response system. This enhancement is an additional 11 members to the crisis team who are dedicated to responding to calls involving the unique and specialized needs inherent to youth and families. Additionally, Spokane County was selected from an extremely competitive grant award process for a mobile response and stabilization services to expand youth and family engagement for up to eight weeks following a crisis. This ensures a more equitable behavioral health continuum of care for youth and families throughout the county. Now let's transition to some of the programs we're providing for adults experiencing behavioral health challenges. The Behavioral Health Transitional Support Pilot Program will embed clinicians in shelters so clients do not have to travel to appointments throughout town. This will limit missed appointments and help the continuum of care at licensed shelter facilities. We look forward to putting out this request for proposal soon. The Homeless Outreach Stabilization and Transition Team program will engage homeless individuals with medical and behavioral health needs by deploying a team as such a nurse or a counselor to shelters or to the street, providing these services where they're at and where the need is most prevalent. Through the implementation of this new program, we will continue to break down barriers that inhibit individuals from accessing critically needed services while working to address issues of equality, equ sorry, equity and healthcare disparities. 
Resulting from the Blake decision, there's a new recovery navigator program. This is a pre-arrest engagement model. The program seeks to divert individuals dealing with substance use to recovery support programs versus getting them in our criminal justice system. The RNP teams work in the field with direct partnership with law enforcement. They will provide a wide range of coordination engagement services, including behavioral health referral, peer support services, case management, substance use treatment, housing support, and resource engagement. When interventions in the field do not work, we have the Spokane Regional Stabilization Center there to assist law enforcement and other first responders as a jail booking diversion program for eligible offenses and offers a new referral option for judges. The Stabilization Center, which opened late last fall, has already reported over 400 interventions. This facility provides services for mental health crisis, substance use, and withdrawal management with in-house capacity to allow individuals to play a place to stay safe stable until their next step is ready. So we're now going to take a look at a video showing the positive impact that this is having on our community. Okay, so you're going to be under arrest for your three trespass warrants, okay? When police and sheriff's deputies arrest someone for eligible offenses, they can be taken to jail or diverted to Spokane's new regional stabilization center. So usually when they want to go to treatment, we're able to provide them this resource that we're able to take them there and get them either in a withdrawal management program, a mental health program, or co-occurring disorder. For example, this young woman was admitted to the stabilization center after deputies found her sleeping in a flower bed. So I offered her stabilization here a chance to get help with her medication and she accepted. We were able to avoid a trespassing arrest and bring her here and hopefully get her the help she needs. Spokane County, the city of Spokane, and local leaders stood up the Regional Stabilization Center last fall when they realized someone with drug or mental health problems wasn't likely going to make a successful recovery while behind bars. Yes, and that's what is beautiful about this facility, is it gives them that opportunity if they need mental health help, um, if they need to, to look at medications to help them with that. It does that. If they've got a substance abuse issue, then we can help them in that area. The medical professionals at the Stabilization Center can identify care plans and prescribe medicine that can help someone ready and willing to start a new path beyond the revolving door of our county jail. Patients here enjoy healthy meals and have safe, clean places to sleep. The Pioneer Human Services staff know by providing those daily essentials, their patients are freed up to concentrate on resolving their individual issues. I've been in treatment over 49 times in my life and realized it's, I didn't want to quit. I, I, I didn't want to come away from my security blanket, which was, you know, drugs and alcohol. After 45 years of life on our streets and more than 100 arrests, Clay began his treatment here at the Stabilization Center last March. This place made me uh, feel comfortable enough to keep going with it. And I stuck with it. I'm still sticking with it. Clay has now been clean and sober for six months. And I still stay in contact with these people because they're my new friends um, and they're real. It only took 45 years, <laughs> but it was worth the wait. I'm proud of you that you stuck with it and you believed in us to, to stay with us. With the help of referrals from law enforcement, the center is now offering treatment to an average 35 patients every day. But this new way of offering people a course out of addiction would have never become a reality without regional cooperation. Well, the issues that we're facing today really are regional issues. And so if we can come together with our regional partners to address those issues together, that's what we need to be doing. And I'm really happy with this collaborative uh, effort to get people connected to the resources that they need. In the first quarter of this year, 86% of the people who received treatment at the Stabilization Center reported improvement in their well-being and mental health recovery. In addition to treatment, Pioneer connected 46% of those same patients, including Clay, with a new place to live off of Spokane streets. And I think this shows that when we really come together, we put politics aside, we're going to make a difference for our community and for our citizens. Jeff Humphrey, City Cable 5. So I want to say thank you to the mayor and, and this.
and the city of Spokane because it was really coming together to make the video as well as making the stabilization center what was needed for law enforcement and for our citizens. So as you can see, these innovative programs we just covered are designed to help during significant challenges and come at a critical time, providing the support to youth and families in our community. This is only possible by contracting and working with great providers, such as Excelsior, Frontier Behavioral Health, Pioneer Human Services, which are just among few of them. With the road of recovery challenging enough to navigate alone, Spokane County is hard at work maintaining the journey less burdensome and with a lot less potholes. I had to give a shout out you know, to Rhodes. So. so next I want to talk about law enforcement. Get my uh, prop here. <laughs> Only the county has the reach of the sheriff's office. Together with my fellow commissioners, we're committed to providing the sheriff's department with the resources they need to keep this community safe. We had a groundbreaking for the small arms range and training center just this last April. It was a frigid cold day, I will tell you that, when we were all out there. Windy on the West Plains. This is a partnership between the Air Force, Spokane County, and the sheriff's office. In the this is the first Air Force and local government partnership in the nation. We are proud to be able to provide a shooting range and world-class training facility to both Fairchild and our Sheriff's Dep Department. Ozzie said he wanted to break ground before he retired, and we did just that, Ozzie. So now I would like to ask Ozzie to come up. I'm gonna let him explain the hat, and as, as my husband say, and I say, the man who needs no introduction, Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich. All right, the hat. Mary is wearing the spring summer ensemble. <laughs> I'm wearing the winter fall ensemble. And how do we get to the hats? We were sitting in the command staff and one of our lieutenants said, you know, Sheriff, I, we have a, a, an idea for morale. I said, okay, well, what is it? And she said, well, just a minute. He steps out, comes back in wearing a hat. I thought Chief Ellis was going to swallow his computer. We have yet to see what on his head. But uh, that's how we came about hats. Uh, the troops went, we really would like to have this. And we, hey, I'm from Wyoming, that was easy. So that's the hat. Now that didn't count on my five minutes, did it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mary asked me to talk about a couple of things. What, uh, in the 16 years I've been here that uh, I'm most proud of, and I can tell you that's, that's a hard one. You know, because we brought back Crime Check. We rebuilt the Emergency Communication Center, or system, state of the art. I am concerned about that, though, because we made a promise those funds would be spent to maintain that system they're about ready to be sweeped, and I'm not happy about that because we made a promise to you all that those funds would be spent one way. Crime. We kept crime in pretty much tight reign from 12 to 20. From 20 to now, it's not your law enforcement folks. It's bad policies, bad law. We need to do something to fix that. Training. I am very proud of training. That, that, that groundbreaking. Your training arm in this Spokane County is nationally, internationally recognized. We've had people from across the world come to train here. We are the only agency in the United States that has our training certified through IATLAS, which is the uh, Post Academy Directors uh, Association, and we're the only one that does that. Training is vital. We're building a partnership with the, the Air Force, a new training academy. I read in the paper, uh, City of Spokane is getting ready to build a regional training academy. Remember, we built that with you in mind. So not too late to do some change orders. We could really have a, a regional training academy. We're also helping the state of Washington rewrite their basic law enforcement academy because it is currently legally indefensible. We're doing that because they recognize the work that we do in training, and I have the best curricular writer in the state of Washington, Tony Anderman. When I hired him, 
I knew that I could take, him, take our training to the next level, and we did. He used to work for the state. Our regional intelligence group, soon to be Real Time Crime Center, is something I'm extremely proud of because it has become known for its intelligence work to the point that it has been notified and designated as the backup for the entire state's intelligence center. And we have people from the west side that want to come to work in our, our, our center. Community partnerships. Judith Gilmore and I built many things. AGC helped us with that, and we built a apprenticeship program into the building trades, which is highly, highly successful. We can help people. We can get people out of poverty. You know, it was amazing to be at the brown grading breaking for housing for our, our new Ukrainian citizens. What was heartbreaking is here, Sheriff, I want to go to work. We want to work. You know, folks, we can put a man on the moon, but we can't get visas. I can't figure that out. There is something wrong. People that want to work should be able to work. Our forensics unit is accredited. Our Department of Emergency Management is working towards accreditation. What's my regrets? It will always be the Spokane County Jail. Um, it's good to hear, though, members of our community start uh, recognizing that we need a new facility. Folks, it was never about a new jail. It was about a new system, one built on smart justice one that dealt with not incarcerating people, but giving them an opportunity to break the cycle of incarceration. That's how we became the third largest mental health in institution in the state, because we saw the need and we started fixing the need. Our new form of government tr troubles me, because I envision and I predict it will become fiefdoms, and there will be no clear vision for Spokane County at that point. It's been my honor to serve you. You are a great community. I can think of no other community that has the potential that you have. And I truly mean that. And when you finally grow up and realize your potential, you will be unstoppable. But until you stop the divide, we can't move forward. We have to stop enabling that which is crucifying our community. I hope you all well, and it has been truly the greatest honor of my life to serve you. Thank you. So I wanna say thank you all for being here today. That's gonna to be my concluding thoughts here, are that nothing is impossible. My hope for today is that you got a glimpse into many of the innovative ways that Spokane County is taking conversations to collaboration and making ideas into reality. Let's move together forward to ensure Spokane County remains the best place to live, work, and play. Thank you all for being here today.